turn with me to Isaiah this morning. <clears throat> Isaiah chapter 43. Isaiah 43, amen, praise the Lord. Say amen when you get there. I had a couple amens. If you can't find it in your Bible, it's on page 675. In mine, it's right after Matthew. <clears throat> now you're going to spend all day looking for it, amen. It's in the Old Testament, Isaiah. 43 says, but now thus says the Lord who created you, O Jacob, and he who formed you, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by your name, and you are mine. Amen. That's what the Lord's speaking to you and saying to you this morning. First, he's telling you to fear not. Amen. <clears throat> and so in this world, in these trying times that we're living in, fear seems to be the weapon that people want to use or Satan wants to use against you. Amen. Because fear gets the church closed. Amen. Fear gets the Christians sitting at home. Fear gets us off our game. Amen. And what fear does is the opposite of what faith does. Amen. The Bible says without faith is impossible to please God. Amen. So listen, it's time we get out of fear and into faith. He said, fear not, for I've made you. You see, this morning you are, O Israel, amen. The God said that he made you this morning, and he said he redeemed you. Now what does it mean to be redeemed? It means redeemed. It means forgiven, amen. It means bought again, amen. It means that you once were lost, but now you're found, amen? It means you once were dying and going to hell and now you're going to heaven, amen? amen. You see, redeemed means that you've been bought with a price, amen? amen. That your life has value, that your life has worth, amen? amen? You see, redeemed, he said, I redeemed you, amen? amen. You got to understand the gravity of that statement. Amen. And then listen, he says, I know you by name. Yes. I know you by name. Glory. Amen. Do you understand what it means that the God that made the universe, come on now, the God that created every and all things, he knows you by name. You see, I don't think you get that. You see, if you got that, it wouldn't be quiet in here this morning. See, he knows you by name. That means he knows your likes. He, you understand what I'm saying? You see, how good does it make you feel when you show up to church and somebody at the church knows you by name? Amen. Amen. You know, now, now listen, I'm terrible with names. But God's not. You see, he said, listen to me, church. He said he made you. He made you. Would you stop trying to change the you that God made? And any other thing than what God made you for? You see, it's not the changing in the, in the one hand that we need to do, except for the changing to be better at how God made us. You see, God created each of you with a specific purpose in mind. Amen. He gave you talents. He gave you abilities. He gave you a, a, some of you. Come on now. Now, some of you, I know we got to dig really deep. <laughs> but he dug really deep when he found me. So there's hope for you. Amen. You see, God created you and he made you. Now, listen, those attributes that you have in your personality that just, you, you know, the ones I'm talking about, you know, my wife was talking a little bit about her, her anger issue and stuff. She doesn't really get angry. She's just trying to be modest. <laughs> my wife is very passionate, very passionate. Amen. And, and it's taken me a lot of time over the years to, to understand that sometimes her passion her passion, I misread as anger geared at me. But it's just passion. <laughs> but 
But see, God uses her passion because her passion is what drives her to make change in the church. Her passion is what drives her to make sure her family is well taken care of. Her passion, you see what I'm saying? But see, the passion run amok. Come on now. But that's where we're at. You see, God doesn't want you to change the characteristics of your personality. He wants you to bring them under his reign and control. <clears throat> Listen, it is the hard headed and stubborn people who get things done. Amen. It's the people who are hard to teach, who are hard to, come on now. But see, we got to get a stiff neck turned towards Jesus. Come on now. And start taking the personality traits that God gave us, redeem them because he already redeemed you and use them for the furtherance of the kingdom. Amen. You see, we're looking for an army. And we want an army of men and women who will stand up for what they believe, who will speak the truth, who will stand strong in what God's called them to do, who will realize and understand that the Bible's not just a good book with some good information. It is the inspired Word of God. It is a love letter from God directly relating, directly written to you in order to change your life, in order to make you better. He already redeemed you. He already paid the price. Now it's time for us to start losing. Now listen to me. We got to lose that slave mentality. You got to get rid of that poor me, poor me mentality. You got to get rid and let loose of all that low self-esteem issues that Satan keeps trying to attack you with. You got to let go of the I'm not worthies. Let go of the I'm not beautifuls. Let go of the I'm not skinny enough or I'm not big enough or I'm, you understand what I'm saying? And get hold of I was beautifully and wonderfully made in the image of my father. He made me who I am for what I am, dedicated for a purpose, redeemed by a price. Amen. You see, God loves the you that you are, and he sees you. He sees you as a beautiful child. Amen. Now listen to me. If you're a parent... Your baby was the most beautiful baby that you ever had. Amen. I believe beyond a shadow of doubt, listen to me, I had the most beautiful children when they were babies. But I've seen some of y'all's babies. Them things wasn't done cooking. You need to put them back. But see, God only sees his beautiful babies. You see, he's a good, good father. And he has nothing but your best at heart, your best in mind. He created you for his good pleasure to serve and to worship him. He made you the person that you are with all of the warts, amen, with all of the challenges, amen. Veronica, there's hope for you yet, amen. (laughs) Mike saw the diamond in the rough, amen. God made you. God loves you. Start believing that instead of what anybody else has to say about you. Amen. Give the Lord a big hand. Amen. All right. It says in verse 2, when you pass through the waters, I'll be with you. It says when you pass through the waters. Amen. Amen. You see, we got to get out of this mindset that because God's made me beautiful, and listen, he made me handsome. Mm. (laughs) Twisted steel and sex appeal. (laughs) 
<laughs> Why do you laugh? <laughs> <laughs> That's not funny. <laughs> See, although he's made you, it says, when I pass through the waters. Yeah. You see, you got to understand that you're going through the water. Right. You see, we're going through the water. That's not a question of whether or not you're going to get wet. Amen. The question is, how well are you going to be equipped when you get to the other side? You see, it says, when you pass through the water. All right, now listen. When you pass through the water, it means we're going through. Amen. The problem with a lot of us is our, our destiny, our journey is on the other side of the water. But see, we're so worried about going through the water that we're staying on this side. Am I preaching to somebody this morning? You see, you got to understand that it's not the water where the challenge is. The challenge is right here. Because going through the water ain't nothing but a thing. In Jesus' name. But see, man, it gets better because, see, at first it talks about going through the water. And the, and the water, you guys ever been to the lake in the morning when it's like glass? Man, it is beautiful. It is calm. It is nice. It's like glass. And if you like to ski, that's the best time to ski when the water's like glass. But see, that's the waters that we start at. Amen. You see, we start, we got to get to the point that we can get through that water because hold on, it's getting ready to get better because see, he says next, see, we're going to pass through the water, but then he, he says next here and through the rivers. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> You see, we started in the water with no current. No current means, come on now, the challenge wasn't really that bad. Oh, this ain't, this ain't nice, is it? I just don't think you're getting it this morning. You see, that's the baby Christian in you. We just getting in through the water. And, and some of us never graduated. <laughs> <laughs> you you didn't even get one of those internet, you know, virtual gadgetations. <laughs> Wasn't that fun, Brent? Congratulations, by the way, my nephew on graduating with a BS. <clears throat> but listen, once we get through the water, now we got to get into the river. Now, how many of you ever been swimming in the river? You see, when you swim in the river, when you start and you're going to swim over there, when the current gets a hold of you, you're swimming that way. You see, in your life, you passed through the water when you got saved. Amen. But now life is just coming at you with all kinds of current. And see, the goal and the focus that where you were headed, you keep getting swept downstream. And instead of understanding that although my mark might be here in Jesus' name, I'm still going to get over there in Jesus' name. And the new there that Jesus is bringing me to is better than the one that I thought I was headed to. See, you need to stop telling Jesus how to pull you through the river to get to where you think he wants you to be and buckle up flash <laughs> while you're shooting the rapids because the rapids are in the river. But see, the Bible says right, right here. Did, did, are you reading this this morning? It says that they shall not overflow you. They will not overflow you. Have y'all seen what a river does when it overflows? It just washes away everything in its path. Amen. Everything in its path. But see, in your life, some of us get to feeling that way. We just think the problems that are coming and the rivers that I'm going through are going to wash away everything that I've worked for. Everything that I love. You understand what I'm saying? But see, the Bible says they're not going to overflow you. 
Do you believe that this morning? Then, you see, we spend so much time fighting, kicking, and screaming in the river. Come on now. Instead of just saying, whoo, you know, if you're, if, you, if you're in the current of the river and you need to be where the river's taking you, if you enjoy and use the current, <laughs> you get quicker to where you're going. Amen. You see, stop fighting against the current. The current is change in your life. The current that you're fighting against is the personality and the character traits that you possess that aren't pleasing the Lord. Amen. Come on now. But they're the ones that he gave you to further the kingdom. So stop fighting the current. Release it to the Lord. Flow with him in the current. Amen. And the destination that you thought you were headed to changes to where you're going, and now we're on the right path. Amen. Man, I just preached my sermon, condensed it in five minutes. Y'all pressed? <laughs> <laughs> you see, listen, church, God is always about change and better. Change and better. But, oh, and it gets better. You're going to like this part. Because after we've been in the water, the river, now it says, when you... Walk through the fire. You shall not be burned. When you walk through the fire. Amen. When you walk through the fire. You had a little fire in your life? Come on now. We've had some challenges and some problems. Amen. But listen, when I look around the room, you know what I see? I see you. That means to me, you, you walk through your fire. Amen. You see, we have this amazing ability to forget all that God's brought us through in the midst of the newest challenge that we're facing. When if you understand the principles on which the word is written, you'll understand that as your challenges get greater, your rewards get greater. And that, you see what I'm saying? But see... We forget that we made it through the water. Amen. Amen. You see, we forget we made it through the water. And, and, and once we've made it through the water, we've praised Him, we've worshiped the Lord, and we say, Oh, thank you, Jesus, I made it. Amen. But hold on, because now we got to get in the river. Now, sometimes we're still a little tired from being in the water. Come on now. And now we're in the river. You see, what happened was line upon line, precept upon precept, truth upon truth. The things, now listen, it's like growing up. How many of you can remember back to grade school? Some of us, it was a long time ago, right? Dirt floors in one classroom, right? Bob, it was uphill both ways, right? Had to go in the snow, no, no shoes or holes in my shoes, amen. Carry my little brother on my back, yeah. <clears throat> but see, when you were in the first grade, you know, school had a challenge. But when you got to college, how was the challenge? <laughs> see, not everybody who went to first grade made it to college. Because some of them got lost. You understand what I'm saying? See, in your Christian experience, getting through the water is first grade. That's first grade. Amen? And we're swimming around in the water challenges. That's elementary school. Now, once we finally get through elementary school, we start into junior high, high school. Amen? Now, how many of you remember the change from elementary school to junior high, high school? Amen. You went from one teacher normally with one classroom. Amen. Now all of a sudden you had seven different teachers. You had seven different classes in seven different locations. You had a combination that you had to remember to put your books in. Amen. You had a combination you had to remember to put your gym shorts in. Amen. You had to remember homeroom and what you understand what I'm saying? And then they got rid of my favorite class recess. There was no longer recess. 
What's up with that? No more recess. And you had uh, X amount of time to get from class to class. You're still trying to figure out what they're doing, making you go to seven different classes. Getting lost halfway in between. And then there's always some knucklehead upperclassman that's trying to convince you that if you take the elevators that don't exist, they're down around. Oh, you understand what I'm saying? You see, the devil is always trying to convince you there's a shortcut to where you need to be or where you want to go, but there's not. You got to climb them steps every day. Every day you got to get up and go to every class every day. You see, the classes start in the morning when you start your day with praise and worship. They start when you start your days with prayer, amen. When you start and you realize, now listen, ain't it great? Because once we graduate high school, we off to college. Oh, thank you, Jesus. You see, the challenges that we've come through have now come past me losing my temper over menial things to trying to figure out who God is once in a while, trying to make sense of COVID-19, trying to you understand what I'm saying. My challenges change. And now all of a sudden I find myself saying, when you walk through the fire. Now see, there's nothing in the natural that survives the fire. You got to understand where we've been going here. Amen. You see, in the natural, you, you, you got a good chance if you can swim, getting it through the water. Amen. And even through the river, if you're a better swimmer. Amen. But see, nobody survives going through the fire in the natural. You see, in your Christian experience, we don't like to teach you that as progression moves and goes, at some point in time, the challenge that you're facing is the fire. Mm. Say, Pastor, that's not very encouraging. Oh, my gosh, that's the best news you've heard all day. Because see, Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego, you remember the story of their fire? You see, theirs was a literal fire. Yours is only a supernatural spiritual fire. Amen. So come on, quit your complaining. Quit your complaining. Lather up in your suntan lotion and get to stepping. Amen. Come on now. You see, they fought and had to stand in and fight mentally through going into a real fire. Amen. A physical fire. You know what my favorite part of that story is? My favorite part is when the king looks in there and says, did we not throw three men into the fire? Didn't we throw three? And he's like, one, two, three, four. One, two, do you see four? I'm counting four. You see, Jesus is going to meet you in your fire. See, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego had to get into the fire where Jesus was. You got to get into your fire where Jesus is. He's the fourth man in the fire. And getting into the fire is where Jesus is. But you like a cat getting into the bathtub at the door to the furnace. <laughs> let go and let God. Listen, stop fighting where God's trying to bring you, thinking that it's nothing but an attack of the devil. He who intended what he intended for evil, God will change for good. Amen. He's faithful. He who began a good work is faithful to complete it to the end. Amen. Listen, hold your nose and jump on in. <laughs> God's going to meet you in the midst of your worst challenge. If you'll let go of the challenge and hang on to him. Amen. 
You see, that's how much God loves you. That's how much God loves you. He loves you so much. Come on now. He created a way. He created you. He redeemed you. He told you in your word that we're going to start off with some little baby challenges so that you can grow in faith. And then our challenges are going to get a little bit better. You see, we got to stop thinking they're getting worse. They're getting better because the reward, you see, the reward gets better. When God brings you through and moves you to the next level, there's new revelation, new knowledge in Him, new peace in Him. There's a new prosperity level that comes in the faith that you don't attain until you've been through the fire. Amen. 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 God is good. God is good. The fire doesn't define God. Amen. He's redeemed you. Bought you with a price. You have great value with him. He loves you so much. That he's molding you and shaping you. And he's moving you into a vessel of honor. Amen. A vessel of honor for his glory. So listen, God wants to brag on you just like you want to brag on your own kids. Amen. Have you seen my servant Kim? Amen. Have you seen my servant, Alan? Amen. You see, that's, that's my daddy. That's my daddy. My daddy's proud of me. My daddy loves me. Amen. And so does your daddy. Amen. Give God a big hand. Amen.